very thankful for the prayer that was offered by Brother Randall on our behalf and would ask that you might continue to pray this morning if the Lord would bless the time that I and Brother Don stand before you and in all things God would get the glory. Me and uh, Sister Suzanne and I, or Suzanne and I, we left uh, Friday afternoon and about 1.20 and, and went to Austin and got there just prior to the time services started. Uh, spent the night with Brother Matt and Sister Becca Hodgewox. And we went to the services yesterday morning and uh, ate lunch. And then about 1.30 we loaded back up and came back to Lubbock. It was a fast trip, but we certainly enjoyed being with them. And, and there's so many dear brothers and sisters in Christ down there that we are certainly thankful to be with. Uh, Thankful to be with Brother Dickey and, and very much enjoyed the, the preaching. The theme that Brother John Melvin had this, this weekend, and I'm not going to speak on that. There's a few thoughts that I may bring forth, but it was a process of spiritual growth. And, you know, I believe that is the truth. We grow in grace and knowledge. We don't just wake up with it. It, it is a process and a journey in our lives. Brother John is a little bit unorthodox compared to most primitive Baptist preachers you see. There's sometimes he'll bring out a, a, a board and he'll write on it. And he wrote something, though, that was, you know, that I found a little use for, where I, in my life past, I found very little use for. It was a, a, an equation that you would have had in algebra. It was 5x plus 1 equals. Well, in my lifetime, uh, what I did take some algebra, learned very little from it, had no use for it, still don't. So as far as algebra went, it didn't. But the X in that, he said, represented variables in our life. The one is a constant, and whatever that equals is the product. And I would like to look at things from that perspective this morning for just a moment and look at 5X being the variables plus the constant being Jesus Christ. He is the only constant in our life, and that's what he used there. One being the constant, one being Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is no variableness with Jesus Christ. There is no changing with the Lord. Therefore, he is our constant. And I believe in, in him that is where we find true joy and true peace and, and, and really true happiness. All the variables that you have in this life, plus the constant that Jesus Christ, I want to look at the product being equaling, being satisfied, satisfaction. Now, some people are going to say, well... You can't be satisfied in this world. But I'll take just a few minutes. There is, a, there is a time in our lives when we open our eyes in the presence of the Lord, we are going to be satisfied. So hang with me just a moment here. David said over in the 17th Psalms in the 15th verse, he said, <clears throat> And for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. You may be one of these individuals that is not ever satisfied. I'm telling you, we, among the human race, we, we have a multitude of those folks. We really do. We're going to look at three groups here in just a moment. But the question I bring before you, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with your husband? Are you satisfied with your wife? Are you satisfied with your job? Are you satisfied with how much money you have in the bank? Are you satisfied with how many accomplishments your children have, have brought forth in life or have not brought forth? Are you satisfied with the way you look? You know, satisfaction is really a part of our life whether we want to admit it or not. And there's something down deep within our soul and our heart that yearns for satisfaction. Is there not? We, we yearn to be satisfied because a person that is not satisfied is a person that is not happy. The more they complain the more evident it is they're not satisfied in life. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11, he said, I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Do you know that being content means to be satisfied? Now I'll tell you right now, you may not be satisfied to the extent you will when you open your eyes in, in, in the presence of the Lord and sin no more has dominion over you or is present in your life. But I believe that in Jesus Christ, we can be far more satisfied than we think we can in this life. We really can. You know, I think there's three groups that you can classify all human beings in, and it includes God's children. The first group is folks who are never satisfied. I don't care how good it is. I don't care what's going on in their life. 
Complaining seems to be at the top of the list. It's never any good. Proverbs 23, 27 and verse 3 says, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's not Kenny's words. That's God's words. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, so is he. If you begin to think it's never going to be any good, there's never nothing going to happen good to you in your life, you can pretty well bet that's the way it's going to be. God says so in his own word. As we think, it has a tendency to change our attitude, to be satisfied or unsatisfied. We're going to find out that one of the most satisfied characters in all the Bible was the Apostle Paul. And when you read his story, you and I would unlikely be satisfied with anything that he went through. He was beaten, thrown in prison, shipwrecked. Stayed in the ocean two nights and two days, I believe it was, or at least one night in a day. I mean, things happened to the Apostle Paul that have never happened to you and I. Yet Paul said, I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Brother John Melvin said there has to be a constant in your life. And that constant has to be above all things. If the variables of your life, and we all have variables, all of us have different difficulties and troubles and trials, and they're what keep us from being satisfied in this life. They really are. Where is your focus? Is it on the things of this world? Is your constant your bank account? Is your constant your job? Is your constant your health? You know, Paul said in this life that it was a joy to suffer. How many of you can rejoice in suffering? Paul learned that. He really did. He didn't say you're going to wake up one morning and this condition will just overflow you. He said, I have learned in whatsoever state. Now, the Bible tells us that we're to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We're also told in Hosea chapter 4, my people are destroyed for the, because of, or for the lack of knowledge. In other words, they were rejecting the knowledge of God. God said, I will reject thee. Now, they didn't lose their everlasting life. Why? Because Jesus is constant. What Jesus came to do, he finished and fulfilled, and that will never change, just as Jesus Christ never changes. What we got to look at and, and the challenges that go before us is, can we have a satisfied life? Can you be satisfied? There's another group of folks that we want to consider for a moment. There are those folks who are satisfied for a little time, but it doesn't last. A lot of us fit in that category. We're satisfied for a season. You know, we go buy a new house and we're satisfied for a little while, but after a while that house didn't bring us any satisfaction. We got to go get a new set of clothes, and pretty soon we're not satisfied. I was reading an article that Brother Dickey wrote on the uh, website, and he talked about folks having refrigerators full of food, but they never had anything to eat, closets full of clothes, but they never had anything to wear. We indulge all the time. I mean, it's hard for you and I to be satisfied. We're always looking for something. When you look for something in this world to bring satisfaction, you're not going to find satisfaction whatsoever. Let's notice Proverbs, and I'll try to move along and let Brother Don come forward. We look at Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Now the Bible tells us from a carnal standpoint, if you're out here in this world trying to find something to satisfy you, it may satisfy you. Even the pleasure of sin may be good for a season, but it's not going to last. You're never going to find real satisfaction. Over in Ecclesiastes, Solomon says in the first chapter and verse 8, All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the, or the ear filled with hearing. He says when it comes to this old carnal flesh and everything that you and I strive to gain in this life, he says, you're never going to be satisfied. There's never enough of it. When you buy a new house, it gets old. You've got to have another fix. We're kind of like dr uh, junkies, drug addicts. Kind of like alcoholics. We've got to have another drink. We've got to have another shot. It's never good enough. We're never going to find that happiness in life. How happy are you? 
How satisfied are you? You satisfied with your wife or your husband? You satisfied with your children? You satisfied with your work? Are you satisfied with the people you work with? Are you satisfied with your family, your neighbors, and your friends? You know, satisfaction is something that our soul yearns for. I believe it. We all yearn for satisfaction. And thank God one day we'll open our eyes in the presence of Jesus Christ and the Bible declares unto you and I we're going to be satisfied. You know, we all wonder about heaven. What's it going to be like? We're going to know one another? Are we, what are we going to do up there with all this time where there is no time? Well, I tell you, we're going to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. David said, you're going to be satisfied. But friends, I'm concerned in you being satisfied right here and now. There's that group of folks who are satisfied some of the time, but it doesn't last. It lingers, but it doesn't last. They've got to have something else. But I believe there are a group of folks, and I know two in my life, and I won't mention their names. I know there's a few more. That I believe have went through life as satisfied as anybody I personally know, and I knew them, I know them quite well. I mean, enough to know that satisfaction was a greater part of their life. It just seemed to be satisfied whatever went on. You know, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And there be few that go in there out. That's not people going to heaven, brother and sister. That's the people who are walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, whose constant in this life is Jesus Christ, who are not going around complaining about how they feel, how they look. They're overweight. They don't have the right things in this life. I don't live in a good enough house. I don't have a good enough car. My children aren't acting the way they should. Our constant is something else other than what it ought to be. We cannot be satisfied unless our focus and our conscience is the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's something down deep in you that yearns for that. Sure, one day you're going to be satisfied. You're not going to be complaining anymore. Everything's going to be right, whether you can understand it or not. Heaven's going to be everything that you could ever imagine and then some. Because I can't imagine what it's going to be like. All I know is you're not going to cry anymore. You're not going to hurt anymore, and that's all a glorious thing. You're not going to have any more sleepless nights. That's a wonderful thing. But the Bible tells me that our fullness and our hope is in Jesus Christ today. Notice Paul. He said, I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But notice what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm telling you, this is an individual whose constant in life was the Lord Jesus Christ. It didn't matter how many times he was beat. It didn't matter how bad he felt. Can you imagine how bad he felt being thrown in prison, beaten? Read the 11th chapter, and I'll not go through that today, but read 2 Corinthians chapter 11 if you think you're having a bad day. Things aren't going your way. You're all full of pain. Nothing's good. You don't have the right house. Nobody's acting right. Nobody's treating you right. Friends, I'm here to tell you our focus and our constant is wrong when that's our life and that's where we go in life. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is everything. He's everything. It's in Him that we live, move, and have our being. Not just when we close our eyes in death and wake up in the presence of the Lord, as David said, but now, right here and now. I know we all have troubles. Jesus said, in this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. How could Jesus said, tell you to be courageous and cheerful in the midst of all these troubles? He said, I've overcome them. I'm bigger than your troubles. Well, when we're in trouble, do we look to the Lord or do we look to the world? Do we look to our bank account? What kind of fix do each one of us need? I'm guilty of this as much as anybody that's ever stood here. I'm not a monk. The few that walk the straight and narrow. I can tell you that right now. But it's, it, it, we can. But our constant in this life has to be the Lord Jesus Christ. And not some thing, not some circumstance, or some person. It can't be your husband. It can't be your wife. It has to be the Lord of glory. He has to be the Lord of your life and your focus day in and day out. You know, Paul gives us a testimony to that very fact. He went through some of the most difficult things in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 tells us it was not only given us in the behalf of Jesus Christ to believe on him, but to suffer for his name. sake. Do you want to suffer for Jesus? Can you say I most gladly glory in my infirmities and the difficulties that come my way that the power of Christ might rest upon me? 
You know, Brother Melvin said a lot of us want to treat God like a genie. In other words, we want to tap on the Bible, and when we have a problem, we want him to fix it right here and there. Do we not? God is faithful, and he's long-suffering. But we're a people who live in an instant, gratifying-type society. We go, we're taking pills, we're going to doctors, we're doing everything we can to fix the problem. When we ought to be on our knees praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, help me. Help me to get through whatever difficulty I have. We're all going to struggle with some kind of difficulty. Every one of us in here have and will. And it'll continue. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Friends, attitude is everything. How satisfied are you in this life? Are you satisfied with God? Are you satisfied with the church? Do you believe God has given you what you deserve? I hope and pray that he hadn't. Because none of us want what we deserve. We deserve the eternal wrath and punishment of God forever. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his goodness. James tells us that when our faith grows, in James chapter 1, let me get over there and read that verse. In verse 4, let's get verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That's one problem we have in life. God is patient with us, but we're, we, we don't have a lot of patience when it comes to trials and afflictions and whatever it is that bothers us. We think that if we wait a few days, a few moments, that we've been a very patient person. But let your patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire complete, wanting nothing. The only way to get into that condition is for Jesus Christ to be the, the focus and the constant of your life. I mean... The Bible tells us that if we have food and raiment, we therewith ought to be with it. We should be content. We're told in, in 1 Timothy 6, if you only had a roof over your head and clothes on your back and something to eat, would you be satisfied? Honestly, how many of us would be in, in America? We'd be complaining up one side and down the other, would we not? I know I would be. We want all these other goodies, but the Bible says we ought to be satisfied. Paul said I had to learn some things. You know, and I, I'm learning it as a go, but are we really learning? Do you really want true peace in your life, true joy in your life, that fulfillment? It can only be found in that constant, which is Jesus Christ. And it's because we're told in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. You and I are not consumed and carried away because of the constant that Jesus Christ is, the never unchanging Lord that you and I serve who done for us what we cannot do for ourselves or anyone else. But I'm here to tell you, we can have a fulfilled life. You can have it now, and because I, I know some people that do. I'm not saying they never had a bad thing happen to them, but I tell you, they're satisfied. They get right along good no matter what happens in their life. A lot of us don't do that, and most of us justify the reasons we don't. But Paul said, I had to learn that. How many of you, if you were beat with stripes with a whip, put in stocks and cast into prison, throwed out of a boat and shipwrecked, and on and on goes the story with Paul, could sit there and say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Most of us would say, Lord, come take my life. I want to die. Get out of here. But Paul, he said, it's necessary that I live for the sake of God's people, that I might be a light. See, he, he, he was satisfied. He, he knew where he was going one day, and whatever, whatever state he was in, he was satisfied. I believe that's something that you and I need in our lives. We need that type of satisfaction. Colossians chapter 1, in verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. You know, one of the definitions of satisfied is full and plenty. But somehow or other we got it wrong in this life. We want full of everything out here the world has to offer. We want the carnal flesh full of the things this life has to offer. But we ought to be filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to be filled with him and, and, and commune with him and pray to him every day. It says, verse 18, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. That means he might be first and foremost in our life. Do you want to be satisfied truly no matter what state you're in? No matter how much money you have in your bank account? No matter how hard your job may be? No matter how hard your co-workers no matter how hard your family might be or no matter how bad you might feel, 
Jesus Christ needs to have the preeminence, not those things. Not the people that, that don't do what you think they should. You know, we're all guilty of that. I sure am. But I'm not looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, when I'm doing that. I'm looking unto me. I'm looking unto self. It's our biggest deterrent in this life. May God bless us to look beyond that. I close with the verse here in Psalms chapter 36. We get a couple of them. Verse 7, 36. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee, that is with God, that is with the Lord, is the fountain of life. In thy light we, in thy light shall we see light. Friends, you want light right now? You want the presence of Jesus Christ in your life right now? He needs to be your constant. He needs to be your focus. Not, not your life, not your husband, wife, your children. I can tell you, when your constant is someone else in this life besides Jesus Christ, it will always fail you. It will always fail you. It may be pleasure for a season. It may la linger, but it's not going to last. Because Jesus never changed. And everything else in this world is continuously and constantly changing. So if we want to get through life and the storms of life that come our way and they're coming to every one of us and I know some of the storms that have come your way. If you want peace in your life, come unto Jesus all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said he'd give you rest. The knowledge of Christ and what he's done for you. He came and died for you on the cross of Calvary. But it doesn't begin when you go to heaven. It begins right here and now because he said, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength, the Lord said, is made weakness in you, mine, and everyone else's weakness. That's when we depend upon the Lord day in and day out when we're weak. And I tell you, I've been there. Unfortunately, I hadn't stayed there. The challenge for you and I is to keep that constant all the time, the Lord Jesus Christ. We all got variables, and we, wanna, we, we want satisfaction. I know we do. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you want to be satisfied because satisfaction brings happiness, contentment in our lives. May God bless us to be satisfied until he calls us home to be with him. Come ahead, Brother Don.